Okay, the next two C64s on the bench. We'll get to Donald later. Let's start with this appropriately coloured bread bin first. No RF, which is code for black screen of death. I'm going straight for dead test, just to see what it thinks. Okay. One flash. At least that means there's life in this one somewhere. What could it mean? Could be anything. Could even be the 40 RAM that single flash is indicating. I bet it's not though. Another cardboard RF shield. So good chance this hasn't been opened too much recently. If ever. No clumsy repairs I'll have to unpick. And inside? Nah. Look at that lot. Oh. Oh, socketed. This is joyous to see. Every major chip is in a socket. That's lovely. This could be a two minute repair. Cook the chips on that later. Whenever I'm working on a machine, and I'm often working on multiple machines at the same time, I put all of the screws in a small plastic bag and tape it to the case. This has saved me hours of searching my workshop for screws that might not even have been in this computer in the first place. This has never been opened. This lid is on really tight. Another good indication I'm the first here since the factory. R1 82 Most of the dates on the chips are 83 Don't know how to read that date code 83, 83 CIAs Well that PLA isn't a MOS one So it might be alright I'm hoping that means it's That's okay 82 it's a nice board. A board in superb condition. Even the slight corrosion on the modulator lid is somehow neat and tidy. And this is untouched. The other side is also untouched. It's completely untouched. Oh, is that? What's that? That's what we saw on the other one. Is that a factory bodge? I really don't know. If it's not, that's a strange coincidence it's after not. the last one had the same wire across these points. It's I'm still not. very new to all this fixing stuff malarkey. That's right, comment trolls, not an expert. So if this is a factory bodge, let me know. Right, as there are so many chips socketed, my primary means to find this fault will be another working C64. This one is tested and working fine. Sorry, camera. I know the PLA isn't MOS branded, but the nature of the fault, the single flash in dead test indicating a faulty memory chip, means it's worth checking the PLA first as it's nice and easy to do. So this is the PLA from the faulty machine in a working board and it tests good. LPLA though is good oh. Right. Let's get this one out of the way again. Now I'm gonna remove one chip at a time. I made a small rookie error here. And Nothing terrible. Sorry, but I might have saved myself some time. Can Check you spot it. what it was? I've now decided to take out the SID and see if that's causing the fault. It's unlikely, but it's an easy thing to test. SID. So out that comes. The rookie error was I should have checked the board right after putting the PLA back in, just as a baseline. Now, having taken the SID out and the board springing to perfectly work in life, I'm led to believe it was the SID which was causing the problem. And why wouldn't I think that? Look, a pass on the diagnostics. Huh. Let's get my SID out. Carefully. Ground myself. This is the SID that I thought was broken. 
So is the SID working or not? Installed. <laughs> It is! So that means the problem was probably a corroded socket on the PLA. And taking it out and putting it back into the board fixed the problem. But wait, there's more. But first, let's make sure the SID is working in the original board. And it is. Lovely. I don't like seeing dead SIDs. What's this other fault then? Watch the clock timers here. Something interesting, I think you'll agree. What's that? And that? Is that right? After a minute or so, they go out of sync. So, a bad CIA then? I pick one totally at random and take it out. There's a very good chance it's just another corroded socket, so my intention is to remove the chip and spray some goop inside to clean it. Goop sprayed. Note to you and myself, always check the pins. What's going on there? Well then, how did that happen? <laughs> well, my guess it's is that... been like that the whole time since somebody... Oh, maybe from, from factory. I was just going to say that. I don't think anyone's been in here. It probably lived its life with this fault. I doubt it made much difference. A clock on a C64 isn't exactly essential. And if it ever was noticed, I should think the owner probably shrugged their shoulders and put it down to gremlins and forgot all about it and loaded up speedball again. I love finding stuff like this. I wonder if the person who inserted the chip at the factory had a clue they'd bent a pin and just thought, sod it, I'll let that go down the line and someone else can fix it in quality control. Signs that it was abused at some point. I should know. I've done it enough times myself. Putting the chip back in the socket and it's super stiff on one side. Too risky. Maybe the original fitter had the same problem. I'm not risking bending pins again, so out Ooh. it comes and I'll give it a tweak and try again. That's better. Now, was that the problem? Yeah. That's good. It was. Lovely. Tested with the game and working fine. A gloop of thermal goo and a bend of the metal tab to make it press tight against the top of the Vic 2. I don't particularly like these metal cans. They don't seem to work very well keep the chip cool. Who knew that putting something hot in a metal box wasn't going to be the best solution? Thank you, Keith. What should we go for? Let's go for that. Oh, that's lucky. Phew. OK. 
them on. Oh, do the pins always have to be bent? There you go. Sorry. Is this the right keyboard? No. No. It's the wrong keyboard. This is my keyboard. Sorry. This is the right keyboard. That keyboard would have tested fine. I have a full diagnostic test harness on the way from my buddy Lee Smith off of Lee Smith's workshop. He's currently working on some really interesting ZX Spectrum stuff, including an amazing mechanical keyboard. Go sub to his channel if that interests you. Guess where I put the link? The only thing left to test is the keyboard. If this works okay, that's a nice simple fix. No actual faults and nothing needing to be replaced. return key was a bit sticky but after a few presses it freed itself up cross your fingers looking good we're on the home stretch now oh no bugger <laughs> It's not going to come back to life by itself, no matter how many times you press it. Take it apart and clean the contacts. No signs of damage or corrosion inside, so all I need to do is pass over each contact with a pencil eraser. And then sluice down with IPA. Just in case, I'll clean the spacebar key rubber contacts and the return key while I'm here. bare minimum of screws to test it. Sorry. Good job, Bench Monkey. You can be proud of your work here today. It's working nice as well. More across its range. Very good. A few of the case clips have given out. They're not very strong and this plastic is mostly cheese based after all these years. Just one he's doing like that. Okay. Getting some clips out. If you want to see these being fitted, you can check out this other C64 repair video I made. But for now, this one is going to make some space on the bench for Donald. Donald is a sick puppy who only displays a black screen or a pink screen on dead test. 
I have no idea why that might be, but I'm really enjoying learning how to fix these lovely old computers. Teenage me would have been really impressed. Actually, thinking about it, teenage me would have been bored rigid, but he was a bit of a knob. Wonder what I'd say if I could talk to him now. Probably buy all the 8-bit computers at car boot sales when they're only £5 in the 90s. Enough of this nonsense. I'm off. Bye.